This is Nick with LogosByNick.com, and in this tutorial I'll be demonstrating how you can use a drawing tablet with Inkscape. And if you'd like to learn more about how Inkscape works, be sure to check out my Inkscape Masterclass. It's a collection of over 50 videos where I go over every single tool and feature in Inkscape, and I explain what it is and demonstrate how it works. I'll have a link in the description of the video if you want to check that out. So to get us started here, as you can see, I have Inkscape opened up on my screen and I have my drawing tablet here on my desk. And the way that a drawing tablet works is that it basically allows you to create freehand digital art the same way you would with a pencil and paper. And the tablet I'm using here is a Wacom Intuos. I'll have a link in the description to a short review I wrote about it last year in case you're interested. Uh, the way that this works is that you plug it in through a USB drive. And if you're using Windows 10, it should be automatically recognized and functional without having to install anything. That was the case for me anyway. If that doesn't work for you, then you'll probably have to install some drivers depending on your operating system. I'll have a link in the description for those as well if you need to download them. And once you have your tablet installed, it basically functions the same way a mouse would. Let me show you what I mean here. I'm going to take the tip of the pen and hover it above the surface of the tablet right here. And if you notice, as I move it around, it moves the cursor on the screen as well. And if you notice, I'm not actually touching the surface of the tablet. Once I do touch the surface of the tablet, it registers the same way it would as if you were to click and drag with your mouse. And by the way, this works system-wide. You don't just have to install this with Inkscape. Once you have this installed, you can use this with any of your other applications as well. So uh, this, this works. It's kind of like installing fonts where once it's installed, it works, it works uh, system-wide. And the way that this works here is that the surface area of the tablet is represented by the perimeter of your screen. So if you bring, your, if you bring the pen to the top left portion of the tablet, the cursor is located in the top left portion of the screen and then down here to the bottom right so on and so forth, you get the idea. Now once you have your tablet installed, uh, I would recommend that you go through some of the settings and get them set up first. So what you're, what you're going to want to do is come over here to where it says search and type in Wacom. You're looking for Wacom tablet properties. You click on that and over here you can just take these buttons on the tablet and program them to do whatever you want. These are these buttons over here. I don't use them personally, but if you want to, you can program that to whatever you want. What I'm paying attention to mostly is the pen and mapping. So first of all with the pen, you can adjust the sensitivity to the pen or, or the distance between the pen and the tablet with these settings over here. Over here, you'll notice you can program the buttons on the pen. If you look at the pen closely, I don't know if you could tell in the video, but there's two buttons on this pen here. There's one down here and one up here. And you can program these buttons to do whatever you want. If you click this drop down over here, you can see all the different things you could program it to do. I programmed it to do a specific keystroke, which is control Z, which is the undo function. And I find that useful because sometimes I'll be drawing brush strokes or something and I don't like how it came out. Instead of having to come over to the keyboard and press control Z, I could just press that button on the pen and undo that brush stroke. So that's really useful. And uh, the other thing over here, uh, disabled this other button. I haven't found a use for it yet, so I, I just left it disabled. And then finally over here where it says mapping, this is particularly important if you're using multiple monitors like I am. As you can see here, I have a triple monitor setup, but I have it set up so that this tablet only works on this center monitor right here, which is the monitor I'm using for this video. By default, when I first installed when I first installed this tablet, when I first plugged it in, it had all three monitors indicated here. So that when I used the surface area of the tablet, this whole width of the tablet represented the entire width of all three of these monitors, but the height stayed the same. This created a distortion of an aspect ratio of three to one, and it was really difficult to draw. I couldn't figure out why things that I was drawing with the tablet didn't look right on the screen. Like for example, if you were to draw a perfectly round circle on the tablet, it would be represented by a really elongated ellipse on the screen here. And I couldn't figure out why that was. And then eventually I realized it was because I had, I had the, uh, the surface area of the tablet mapped to all three monitors. So if you're using multiple monitors, make sure to come over here to the, to the mapping tab and just set it up so that you're just using one monitor here. And then we can close out of that. And now we're good to get started here in Inkscape. Uh, there's a few different things you can do with the drawing tablet here in Inkscape. Uh, one thing you can do is you can come over here to the, um, the freehand lines tool. The tutorial I did the other day about using custom brushes, you can use that. Another thing you could do is you can create some calligraphy with the calligraphy pen over here. For this, I like to use the dip pen. The width I have set to 37, the thinning set to 10, and then the rest, the defaults are just the default as they are. And then you just come over to your uh, canvas over here to your drawing tablet and then just click and drag like that or actually press down the pen and, and move it around to create some calligraphy like that. 
and as you can see, it draws it on the screen. So that's one thing you can do with the, uh, the drawing tablet in Inkscape. Another thing this would be useful for is if you're creating those line art style logos that I did in the previous tutorial a couple of years ago, it would be really useful for that sort of thing as well where you could just draw them freehand without having to do all of that with the, uh, with the uh, mouse and clicking and dragging. So uh, I think that should do it for this tutorial. That's how you can go about getting yourself set up with a drawing tablet in Inkscape. If you have any questions, leave a comment below. And as always, thanks for watching.